Uh, so the webinar session will be started within five minutes. Hi everybody, uh, webinar will be started within three minutes. Hi everybody, uh, welcome to today's webinar session. <clears throat> so uh, this is Troy, uh, who is a customer success manager uh, from Midas IT HQ in South Korea. 
And uh, thanks for joining expert webinar session today. And today's session uh, will be conducted by Mr. Ong from company named Dr. To in Malaysia. Uh, I can say that uh, he is expert to use GTS NX and carrying out 3D analysis. And I think that uh, this Dr. To is uh, unrivaled company to design the geotechnical project with the uh, 3D an analysis. So uh, please focus on his presentation and get useful knowledge for your upcoming geotechnical project. And before his uh, presentation, uh, I would like to ask you to answer my questions. Uh, it will take very short time. So uh, let me open the poll. And there are two questions. Uh, the first one is, do you perform the FEM analysis for your geotechnical project? So you can choose yes or no. And the next question is, uh, uh, which geotechnical software do you usually use in your project? Uh, you can select multiple answer from this question. All right, so uh, thanks. Thank you for your answers. Then let me pass uh, my screen to Mr. Ong. Just a second. Okay. Choi? Yes, okay, for CD, please. Oh. Um, just a second. Uh, i adjusting my, uh, my desktop.
Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Midas IT for inviting us to share uh, our experience in using the software. Um, we have been using the software since 2010. Uh, we produce about 10 to 20 models every year uh, using the software. And it helped us to understand the soil mechanics and also help us in decision making. So the uh, focus today is how to model PALS in Midas GDS Annex. I will give a very short introduction on, my, uh, on the company that I work for. Then I will introduce a new method to estimate the power bearing capacity and the corresponding settlement up to ultimate load. That is the key. Uh, then I will present uh, three working examples. One is the installation effect of spam power at the river bank. Next is the large movement of the bridge abutment, which is supported by PAL. And the last example will be the effect of multi excavations next to the next to the underground MRT stations. I will demonstrate all the work, working files at the end of these presentations. We are a geotechnical consultant based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. We undertake all geotechnical design and analysis. And we also offer litigation advice and as an expert witness in the court. Uh, you may want to visit our company website for more information. Let's go into the topic today. Uh, we can model PALS in Midas GDS MX using solid element, embedded PALS or beam element with or without interface. You might want to master all the three methods because you may not know when you need to use it in your modeling. Although the solid element is not very efficient in numerical modeling, but it is very useful in modeling the uh, special situations where, say, you might want to model a low friction at certain portion of your power uh, due to whatever reason, for example, uh, a cavity problems or uh, that power sorry, collapse. Embedded PALS is useful when you have a large power group, for instance, PAL supported uh, embankment or uh, uh, stabilizing your slope with PALS. The problems with the embedded PALS is that you cannot define interface for the embedded PAL. The most rigorous and <clears throat> efficient way to model the PAL is by using the beam element with or without interface. I have two examples to show you here. These are single power problems modeled using Midas GDS NX. One is a long power problems and the other one is a short power problems. They all socketed into the rock. Now, if you model the power it, uh, with interface, uh, I mean beam with interface using the uh, highly non-linear TZ model, you are able to produce the load, the load settlement curve with very, very high, uh, very, very uh, non-linear uh, LT, right? Like as shown is, uh, 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 as shown as a, a red color line here. Now, if you don't model the PAL uh, interface, the PAL response will be a linear elastic, okay? And other parameters for the PAL interface is a normal stiffness modulus, Kn. The Kn is, a, is the spring constant for the PAL in the normal directions to the soils. The lateral PAL response is sensitive uh, to the Kn value. If you input a low Kn value, the PAL response will be softer than uh, what it should be. And if you use a very high Kn value, you will have a numerical instability problem. So we have developed a range of Kn value for use 
by back, by back analyzing lateral lead loaded pile in clay and sand, uh, so that the uh, lateral pile response is purely dependent on the soil in front of the pile and not influenced by the interface. You can find the information in this paper. Now, can we model piles in 2D pin strain model? The short answer is no. Because you are not able to model soil flows in between the piles. And you will overestimate the axial load. You will underestimate the bending moment. The magnitude may be out by 30 to 50%. We found that some embedded pile show short pile behavior. That is less bending moment. The pile is very rigid. And we express this problem in this paper. Now, I'm going to introduce a new DZ and QW curve. I will explain what is new and whether it's worth for you to explore it. We have developed a new DZ and QW curve from 100 instrumental test power. All of them are both powers. The model can simulate hardening and softening for the DZ curve and hardening and the stiffening QW curve. The initial stiffness of the DZ and the QU, uh, QW model is a function of SPTN value and the model was heavily tested. The advantages of these models are, first, the TZ and QW curve are correlated to single parameter only, that is SPTN value. In other words, you can estimate the bearing capacity and the settlement once the SPTN value is known. Second, this is a unified design model for piles in soils and piles in rock. The QU for geomaterial ranges from 0.01 MPA to 100 MPA. Number three, we define the upper bound and lower bound line for shaft and base resistance and the shear modulus. Uh, this is very useful for engineers to evaluate and make judgments on their power results. Number four, the best thing about this, this method is that you can calibrate the parameters for this model using the data from, the in, from your instrumental test power. You can find the details in our paper published in Geotechnical Engineering, ICE, UK. Chai equations, which was originally used to model the stress strain behavior of the concrete was adapted to model the softening TZ curve. The input parameters are ultimate shaft resistance and the corresponding shaft displacement. KIS is the uh, initial stiffness of the TZ curve, which is a function of shear modulus of the surrounding source and a constant R which control the degree of softening. The Rambert Osgood equation, which was used to model the stress strain behavior of the alloy, was adapted to model the hardening TZ curve. The input parameters are ultimate shaft resistance, the KIS, constant alpha, and constant R. Constant R controls the stiffness before the peak. And the shaft displacement can be modeled by adjusting the constant alpha. Using the same equations, I mean the uh, uh, Rambert Osgood equations, we can model the hardening and stiffening QW curve by just changing the constant T. We back calculate the shear modulus of the soil surrounding piles from about 500 DZ curve and plot against the SPTN value. And the correlation is shown in this figure. The trend is increasing shear modulus with QU in log lock, 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 lock skew. Performance of the model. We compare the predicted power top settlement 
against the measured power top, power top settlement at twice working load or at a maximum test load for 35 pounds in our database and 27 pounds around the globe. The result shows that the model can predict the power settlement to an accuracy of maximum plus minus 3 to 5 mm deviation. For most of the power, the settlement can be, can be predicted accurately. Using the same model, we predicted the power top settlement for two maintained load tests in Cambodia perfectly. The piles were 800 mm diameter board piles socketed into grade 3 sandstone. These are class A predictions where the, prediction, where the predictions were made before the load test. That concludes the introductions of the new DZ and QW model. This is the first project applications. Uh, the objective of this analysis was to understand the mechanism of the slope movement due to installation of spun power at the river bank. Before we go into the full 3D analysis for power group problems and the slope, we did some verifications uh, for single power problem. This is a model for single power in soft clay. The clay is modeled by modified cam clay model. The dimension of the mesh is 10 by 10 by 21 meter in depth. The water table is 7.5 meter below ground. The initial radius of the pile is 0.1 meter and it will be expanded to a 0.4 and 0.8 meter radius. This is the total displacement contour looks like after the expansion. And if you plot the vertical displacement of the model, you can see that the soil is actually heaved around the pile in a manner similar to as reported by Massage. Uh, this model is very um, uh, useful when you want to model the heave of the pile due to installations of another pile uh, in soft clay. This is a graph of radial displacement plotted against the normalized power radius and this shows good agreement with the published uh, data where the radial displacement dissipate very quickly against the distance from the power phase. Similarly, the normalized excess port pressure dissipate very quickly against the distance from the power phase. And the response is comparable to the Randolph result. Now, we do the 3D analysis for the power group problems at the river bank. There are 16 piles for this power group. The power diameter is 800 mm diameter, close ended. The piles were driven to set at about 16 meter. The distance from the power to the crest of the slope is a nine meter. The slope is 21 degree in gradient. The water table is 7.5 meter below ground. And the SPTN value for the top 16 meter is zero to four, which imply very soft clay material. The parameters were developed from 1D console test. And they are listed here. Below the soft clay is loose sand. The behavior of the sand is modeled by more column model. Uh, we only model the top 21 meter where the soft and loose material are because they have prominent effect to the slope movement. Uh, we use laptop for mobility reasons. Uh, this is the configurations of my laptop. Uh, the CPU is uh, i7, uh, i7, 9750, uh, 64GB RAM and Quadro graphic card. The computational time for this model is about two days. The average time required to install one spun pile is about one day. The construction sequence is shown in the figure below following the uh, designated arrow like this from pile number um, 8 to 14 to pile number 10 
and so forth. Generally, it can be simplified as installing pile and row number one, followed by row, row number two and row number three. The model construction sequence are, first, generate initial ground stress. Uh, remember to deactivate the K0 condition because this is a slope. The second step is to deactivate the tau row number one and apply the radial displacement. There are three piles in the first row. So the construction time is three days. The third step is deactivate the pile row number two and apply radial dis displacement. And at the same time, pile number one, row number one is activated and the material is changed to concrete from the soil. The, the construction for this step is five days because there are five piles in this row. The second step and the third step are repeated for the rest of the piles. This is the lateral displacement plotted against the distance at the ground level. The result shows that the slope will move about 350 mm. This is the excess pore the pressure plotted against the distance at 7.5 meter below ground. The maximum excess pore the pressure was observed in the soil behind the row number three. Low excess pore the pressure was observed in the soil in front of the pile. This is because the excess, the excess pore the pressure is able to, di to be dissipated through the slope phase. This is the measured lateral, dis lateral deflection uh, at the power head towards the river. The thin line are the measured uh, lateral movement of the power top for power row number one. And this group are the movement for power group number two. This is, this is the uh, outer power, this is the inner power. There are two parts of the lateral movement. The first part is due to the installation of the spun pile. And the second part of the movement is caused by the consolidation of the induced uh, pore water pressure. And this is our predictions for uh, power row number one. And this is our predictions for uh, power row number two. Uh, we're, what I can say is that uh, this prediction is quite encouraging. Uh, with that, I conclude the first working example. This is the second example. Uh, it is about the lateral movement of a bridge abutment. Our client notified a quite a number of uh, parallel uh, cracks on the pier in front of the uh, bridge abutment. And the gap between the bridge beam and the pier was opening, right? Uh, they want us to investigate the cause of the cracks. This model include a bridge abutment and reinforced soil wall, which was founded on piles in soft clay. There are groups of spun piles, two board piles, grid beams with anchors. And below the embankment is soft clay. The soft clay was treated by PVD. This is the mechanism of the movement. Diagram number one is the configuration of the wall as per design. The gap is 330 mm between the top of the wing wall and the bridge beam. The wall has undergone some translational lateral movement in the soft clay to the left due to the construction of the embankment, which is about 15 meters away. And therefore, the gap is close. 
further movement of the wall has caused the pier to rotate at the point of rotation and caused the gap to reopen. At the same time, tension crack will form on the outer face of the pier when the bending moment was exceeded. So this is the mechanism. Um, I will show you um, how we model this in Midas GDS NX. Um, this is the configurations. There are two abutments for, this, the, for the bridge. They are symmetrical. Both of them have shown some degree of distress. Uh, the bridge approach was uh, made up by a reinforced soil wall supported by 300 mm diameter spun pile. The spun pile are 21 meter long, driven to set and spaced at 1.7 meter centers. The reinforced soil wall is about 11 meters, tapering down to 9 meter, butting to the earth, earth embankment here. The earth embankment was reinforced with high, high strength of textile, and below the embankment, they are PVD. The extent of the reinforced soil wall is 50 meter. The soft clay is about 10 meter thick. The unrinsial strength of the soft clay is about 10 kPa and increased with depth to 20 kPa. Below the soft clay, is firm clay and followed by residual soils. The soft clay was modeled by using the chem clay model and the residual soils was modeled by using modified uh, more column model. It is very important to compare your unrinsial strength of your model uh, with the measured unrinsial strength when you use chem clay model, such as shown in this figure, we compare the um, uh, unrisual strength from the chem clay model and the unrisual strength from the CRU test and as well as the CPT test. So that um, uh, you know uh, what is the unrisual strength you're modeling uh, when you use chem clay model because uh, you don't input uh, unrisual strength in uh, can clay model. To find out the cause of the, of the distress, we simulated closely the construction of the bridge apartment. To reduce the uh, computational time, we only model half of the problems, okay, the symmetrical plane. This slide shows all the structural elements for these problems. Uh, this is a reinforced soil wall. These are the spun piles supporting the uh, uh, reinforced soil wall. In front of the spun pile, there are board piles. Um, the diameter for the board piles are 1.5 meter and 40 meter length. Uh, there are anchors behind the uh, grid beams. And this is embankment. Below the embankments, there are PVD. And the grid beams and the geotextile is, um, are embedded in the embankment. Now I'll explain the uh, uh, construction stage. The first step is to generate the uh, uh, ground stress. The ground level is RL 1.4 initially. Then put a minimum fill for a uh, working platform. Then install PVD and lay your textile below the uh, embankment. Then increase the height of the embankment gradually to RL 5.3 and consolidate the ground with six month period. Then construct the ball piles, power cap and the spun pile below the uh, reinforced soil wall and construct gradually the reinforced soil wall to RL 5.3. After that, remove partially embankment down to RL 2.3 to install the spun pile at this portion, grid beams and anchors here, and backfill the, bank, the embankment to RL 5.3, then construct the reinforced soil wall and embankment gradually to 
uh, RL 11.4. This is a total displacement at the end of the constructions. The result shows that the field placement behind the grid beam resulted in significant settlement and lateral movement and subsequently pushed the reinforced soil wall and power deck forward and caused a crack at the pier. This is the lateral displacement of the pier at the abutment. The measurement was only start taken in January 2017 when the distress was first observed. Although some movement had already, had already taken place before January 2017, but our model was able to, sim to, to capture the lateral displacement of the pier for the same period of time. This is our simulations. This is the measured, this is the measurement. Similarly, our model was able to match the lateral displacement of the slab at abutment for the same period of time. This is our simulations. These are the measurement. Our model also able to match the consolidation settlement versus time below the embankment. Now, this is the plot uh, of the lateral displacement plotted against the settlement below the embankment for various uh, KVE. KVE is the uh, equivalent permeability of the clay improved uh, with PBD. There are two parts of the movement. One is the initial stage. I call it stage number one, where the lateral movement is small. And second stage, where the increment of the lateral movement is close to the settlement. You can see that the lateral displacement accelerate when embankment is filled to higher than RL 5.3. And, that, and with that, I conclude the um, second example. This is a third example. Our client was desirous to redevelop uh, an existing shopping complex. The redevelopment is located within the second reserve of uh, an MRT station, underground MRT stations. According to the local railway act, the basement has to be designed in such a way that it will not cause excessive movement to the MRT structures. The maximum permissible uh, induced movement of the MRT structure is only 15 mm. This model includes four deep excavations, two tunnels, four nearby uh, buildings, and many piles, uh, which was used to uh, support slabs and and for temporary structures. This is the layout plan uh, of the basement excavations. This is the existing uh, two uh, level basement. The new three level basement will be constructed parallel to the existing two level basement. The new basement wall is part to the underground MRT stations by a series of buttresses. The surrounding structures are twin tunnels, four story shop lots here and here. Five level underground MRT structures and van shaft, hotels and offices here and two basement uh, car park at the bottom. I will show you in a clearer picture in the next slide. Okay, uh, this is the size, the, 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 the size of the mesh is 200 meters by 250 meters by 79.5 meter in depth. Uh, this model include, uh, as I mentioned, um, the, uh, the old basement uh, wall and a new basement wall uh, within the uh, 
uh, all basement wall, uh, two tunnels, um, uh, surrounding structures and uh, temporary structures, uh, the front the branching columns. Uh, this is a, a full a fully coupled effective stress analysis. Uh, we model the ground water water flow for every construction stage. The uh, property of the unsaturated soils is essential for uh, transient flow analysis. Interface with low permeability. Um, uh, with k value of one to the power of minus ten meter per second was modeled uh, for the walls. Uh, we model the surrounding buildings with um, equivalent slab. Following follow the uh, parallel axis theorem by uh, Dimoshenko. Uh, that we can output the strain and compare against the Berlin charts that I'll show later. Uh, we model the twin tunnels by imposing the uh, prescribed displacement to form an oval shape, follow the uh, logarithm and Polos method. Uh, we use hardening soil model to model the uh, residual soils. Uh, this is a very established uh, um, correlations for the E50 uh, that we use in uh, Malaysia. The computational time for this model is about four hours. This is the plot of SPTN value for all the boreholes. We adopted the lower bound value for analysis. The ST plot suggested that the shear strength of the residual salt is 27.5 degree in friction angle and 9.5 kPa in cohesion. The water table is 0 0.5 below ground. Now I'll explain the uh, construction stage. We start simulating the construction of the uh, pre-war buildings, um, four-story buildings uh, back in 1940s to get the uh, ground stress correct, then consolidate the uh, ground for uh, 30 years. And this will bring us to 1970s. We then simulate the open excavations for two basement, uh, basement for 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 two base for two level basement that has a shared uh, wall with this redevelopment. This is the bottom up construction. We then simulate the existing two basement excavations using the top down construction method and consolidate the ground for thirty seven years, and this will bring us to. 2014 before the construction of the tunnels. We then simulate the construction of the tunnels and the five levels underground MRT stations and the bench shaft by sequential top-down constructions and reset the total displacement to zero. And this will bring us to 2017. We then backfill the uh the old basement the two uh, level basement we then consolidate the ground for uh, five years and then construct the inner walls for the new basement and buttresses uh, butting the mrt substation and finally we simulate the uh, top-down constructions uh for the new be for the new basement this is the deflections of the diaphragm wall for uh, MRT diaphragm uh, for the MRT sub uh, uh, sub basement near the uh, redevelopment site. This is the deflection of the diaphragm wall at the opposite site. This is the measured deflections from the inclinometer, and the lines with markers are the deflections from our simulations. And I will say that the, the uh, predictions of the deflections is uh, not too bad. I mean, the response is there, the magnitude is not too bad. This is a total decision of the model at the end of a simulation. Uh, the maximum deformation of the MRT structures is less than 15 mm. 
uh, with that that complies the local railway act. From the analysis, you can output the strain of the equivalent slabs, and you also can calculate the deflection ratio. And from Berlin charts, you can predict the uh, distortion that will happen to the building. And this is the result. The category of damage uh, is very minor. Uh, the category is zero and two. Zero, category zero means uh, mm, the building will suffer negligible hairline cracks of less than about 0.1 mm. Why? Um, and category two implies slight cracks with uh, which produce cracks up to 5 mm. Um, with this, I come to the uh, conclusions. After that, I will go into the, uh, I, will de I will demonstrate the, uh, the final element model and I will answer some questions, okay? Um, I have introduced a new DZ and QW model, which can predict the load settlement curve up to uh, ultimate load with uh, high accuracy. And the point is it can be implemented in uh, MIDAS GDS and X. I have presented three examples of project applications using MIDAS GDS and X. One is the installation effect of the spun pile at the river bank. And the other one is the large movement of the bridge abutment. And the last example is the multiple, multiple structure interaction problem. Uh, I must mention that it is not our intention to build a complex model. Uh, we try to build the model as simple as uh, possible. We always carry out 2D analysis before 3D analysis to get some idea uh, of the problems. Uh, but sometimes the problems we face is in 3D in nature. For example, the flow of toil between piles. We need to construct such a big model to consider the interaction uh, effect. So um, this end my uh, presentation slides. So I'll go to the uh, model. This is a model for power group analysis that we did for our client uh, in Cambodia. Uh, the engineers um, would like to know what is the settlement uh, for the power group. Um, there are about 500 uh, power, power in this model and there are four layers of soils. Um, the top part are residual soils and uh, the third and the fourth layers and uh, the third and the fourth screen, layers, sir. yes? Uh, we can't see your models. Uh, can you oh. shift the screen? Uh, sorry, sorry. Okay, can you see the model? Yes, yes, thanks. Okay, sorry. Okay. I start over again. Uh, this is a power group analysis that we did for uh, our client uh, uh, in Cambodia. Um, this is uh, actually uh, uh, basically a, a power group analysis uh, using the uh, uh, the new DZ and the QW model. All right. Uh, I just want to show you the uh, important features of this model. I deactivate the soils and these are the piles, a lot of piles, different size and different length, all right? And we model the nonlinear EZ curve for the piles. And we also model the stiffening uh, QW curve for the piles. Those 
nonlinear T Z and Q W curve were derived from the uh, instrumented test power. And then we can apply the load on the pulse. And I just want to show you the results. This is the total de total displacement of the power groups. The, the maximum deflection, uh, the maximum settlement of the power group is about um, 33 mm. And this settlement profile is very useful for uh, structural engineers, uh, for them to design the reinforcement for the slabs. There is a finite element model for uh, power group problems. Then I will go to the uh, the first the model for the uh, first project applications. That is the uh, installation effect uh, of this pump out at the river bank. This is the model. There are two layers of the soil. This is soft clay. This is uh, loose sand. And how we model the PAL installation is by applying the radial displacement around the PALs from radius of 0.1 to radius of 0.412. How we get the 0.412 is is by calculating the uh, equivalent uh, area uh, for uh, 0 0.4 meter radius spun pile. All right. So we apply the radial displacement for the uh, for 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 the uh, for the whole length of the pile. Maybe I deactivate. You can see for the whole length of the power. All right. Now I will show you the uh, second the model for second project applications. That is the large movement of the uh, uh, reinforced soil wall due to the a field placement of the uh, uh, embankment. This is the reinforced soil wall. This is the uh, embankment. And the soft clay is uh, below the uh, uh, walls and the embankment. I think I will just show you the uh, important features. Let me hide the uh, All right. So in this model, um, we actually model the all the uh, uh, construction stage, and you can see here the uh, there are a lot of piles, spun piles with different length. All right, and these are two uh, board piles in front of the uh, uh, reinforced soil walls. These are the uh, reinforced soil wall facing. And this is the grid beams uh, designed by the uh, uh, local engineers. We just uh, aim to find out the root cause of the uh, large movement. Uh, behind the grid beams, uh, there are anchors. You can model the free length and the fixed length. All right. And the very important point I want to stress is that 
you have to make sure the um, the pal is connected uh, to the slack so that the load can be transferred uh, from the uh, reinforced soil wall to the uh, piles. We didn't model the reinforcement for the for the reinforced soil wall. Uh, how we model uh, the reinforced soil wall was just uh, um, a sign uh, cohesion of 100 kPa to model the uh, uh, reinforcement. Um, we simplified the modeling of the reinforced soil wall because uh, the reinforced soil wall is just acting as a counterweight. Uh, we have no interest to know the, the information, uh, the deformations of the uh, reinforced soil wall. So uh, we just um, assigned a co high cohesion for the reinforced soil wall. All right. And I also want to show you how we model the um, BVD treated clay. So let me activate all the models. Uh, we use the uh, uh, method by Chai and Bergados uh, where we calculate the equivalent um, uh, equivalent uh, permeability for the uh, uh, BBD treated clay. Uh, in general, uh, in short, um, uh, uh, the method is just uh, is just to assign a higher perme permeability for the clay. For instance, uh, we assign uh, a, a permeability of six times of the or original uh, soft clay to the to the PVD treated uh, clay uh, below the embankment to simulate the uh, uh, treatment of the PVD. Next, I will go to the uh, to uh, to the uh, the big model. That is uh, uh, multiple excavations, twin tunnels, and uh, the various uh, low-rise buildings uh, surrounding the surrounding the uh, basement excavations. The highlight of this analysis is that we simulate the uh, problems by using the uh, fully coupled effective stress analysis all right fully coupled effective stress analysis so for every excavations we define the uh, what uh, pore pressure boundary uh, for every excavations and also uh, for every uh, construction stage we have to define the uh, time steps um, I want to show you how we model the tunnels um, for this model. All right, yeah. We model the, uh, we, we, we uh, our practice in our company is we try to model the uh, construction of the tunnel by, uh, by the, uh, mm, uh, method follow the uh, models method, uh, which we simulate the tunnel, the uh, the cons uh, the excavations of the tunnels, uh, by applying the uh, grout pressures, um, face pressures, and I mean uh, uh, slurry pressures. Uh, basically, is a, a, a very detailed uh, simulations of uh, uh, tunnel constructions. Um, but in this case, the model uh, is very complex and, 
and the number of elements um, already reached to the maximum level we can handle. So uh, in this model, we use a simplified method, uh, follow the uh, uh, colos and uh, log another method. Um, the basic idea is just to model the uh, tunnels by uh, imposing an overshape of um, the tunnels. Uh, this method is is better than um, contraction methods um, because uh, the results and deformations from uh, polos and Lagrangian method is uh, uh, closer to what we observe um, at site. Uh, by using the contraction method uh, in the tunnel modeling. Um, is actually uh, meaningless because you prescribe the uh, contractions and uh, and the forces in the uh, tunnel is uh, dependent on how much you you uh, compress, how much contraction you apply on the uh, the tunnels. All right, and we model the uh, the low permeability for. Uh, all our walls to simulate the uh, wall. The last thing I want to show you for this model is the result. It's a huge model. So, um, I want to show you um, the pore pressure for this model. All right. We simulate the uh, the uh, drawdown of um, the water table uh, for every uh, excavation phase. Um, we define the the unsaturated source properties uh, for the residual soils. Um, I just want to show you the variations of the uh, water table in our simulations. It will be like this. So, um, MIDA GDS is uh, able to simulate uh, variations of water table because uh, due to the uh, excavations very well. All right. The last thing I want to show is the, yes, this one. You have to define the um, soil water characteristic curve for the uh, your soils. You can estimate the properties uh, using um, various type of functions. Uh, this is very important and essential for you to uh, model uh, the realistic, um, very high nonlinear drawdown uh, in the soils. All right. The last model I want to show you is you have to check your model to prevent any free phase in your model, such as like this, the free phase in the 3D model. All right. This is very important. Uh, the problem with MyDAS GDS is that MyDAS GDS NX still allow you to continue with the analysis until it complete. But the result you get from this analysis is wrong because the load cannot be transferred from one point to the other because uh, 
if you have three phase, the load cannot be transferred. All right, so you have to avoid this. This is this is the uh, one example that we totally discarded the results because of uh, this small free phase we face. And we have to uh, remesh the whole thing and redevelop the whole model. So I just want to show you all our models are free phase free. Uh, I mean, they, they, they are no free phase in our models. Let me deactivate the pause. You can see that um, is is your responsibility as an engineers to make sure your model is uh, your model is uh, has no error. All right. And I also want to show you um, this model. is perfectly all right. There's no free face in this model. So let us check the uh, this model. It takes some time to to load. Okay, so there's no free face in this model. So uh, this model is perfectly all right. Why don't we check this model as well? So you can see there is no free phase in this model. So this model is, is fine. So with that, I complete my uh, demonstrations for the finite element model. Um, now, um, I will look at the uh, questions, whether I can answer some of the uh, questions. Um, from uh, there's a question from Mazen. Uh, it say, she says that it might it might be better to present only one project and explain it in more details. Um, we try to do it, um, but we feel that um, this is just to um, uh, expose you to the problems and. And it is just to a platform to show uh, what this software can do. And this will uh, give you some guide to to model. Uh, it's impossible um, for me to uh, teach you the full steps in this uh, such a short uh, webinar. And you can contact me if you want to uh, learn more about this. Okay. Okay, there's a question from uh, Lo Yiying. Uh, she asked for BB Plaza excavations, how 
did you define the uh, water table levels within the uh, excavations, MRT tunnels, neighboring ex basement? For fully coupled effective stress analysis, what is the reasonable uh, tolerable error? Um, as I uh, mentioned uh, and show you uh, just now, we we carry out the fully coupled effective stress analysis. Um, it, it, it is the same um, uh, method that you model your basement excavations uh, with flows uh, using the stress seepage analysis. The difference is just that uh, in fully coupled effective stress analysis, you combine the seepage and the stress analysis into one and uh, you have to define the time steps um, for the excavations. Uh, how we model the, uh, water, wa uh, the, the water flow is by we fix the uh, um, water table at the uh, far end, at the uh, around the boundaries, and we define the uh, zero pore the pressure uh, at the base of uh, excavations, and let the uh, programs to. Uh, calculate the um, water table for you. Uh, regarding the tolerable uh, error, uh, don't ever, ever change the convergence criteria unless you know what is the consequences to your model. Um, uh, we have ex we have experience uh, in changing the uh, uh, convergence criteria and it will give you a serious uh, error if you use if you if you try to reduce the uh, um, uh, convergence criteria. So uh, uh, I don't suggest you to change the uh, convergence criteria. Okay, uh, from the uh, uh, same person, uh, Law, uh, she asked for the PAL group model uh, in Cambodia. I saw the load is not applied on shear wall, column, rough, or something like that on the PAL top. Um, is this simplification just to understand the PAL group behavior when all PALs are loaded to its working load? Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, interpret your model. Uh, your method of uh, power load modeling. Yes, you, you're right. Um, in this model, we can, um, we didn't model the uh, shear wall, we didn't model the uh, um, bending moment on the, uh, um, what do you call that, uh, 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 shear wall. Uh, we can do it, but this uh, model is good enough uh, for the structural engineers to design the uh, reinforcement for the slabs. The point in modeling the power group the, uh, settlement is that it is not how complex your model is that will give the good result. The point is uh, whether you can uh, model the uh, uh, load settlement behavior correctly that is more important. Uh, I would recommend you to uh, look into the method that we developed over the five years uh, from our uh, experience. Uh, that is more important. And this will give a general um, uh, idea on how much the uh, power group will settle. And the single power behavior uh, in the, uh, is totally different from the uh, power group behavior. Uh, single power behavior, uh, the, the load transfer to the base uh, will have, uh, I mean, sorry, I mean the, uh, the power group for the power group behavior, the load will be uh, transferred largely to the base. And the settlement is controlled by the uh, uh, the uh, soils or the rocks below the power base. 
and we have we need to do this kind of analysis to understand what is the expected power group settlement. Uh, you, you cannot tell the power group settlement from single power uh, load test. So this is the uh, uh, intentions. Hi, Mr. Ong. Yes. Yeah, so there is limit, uh, limited time. So uh, uh, shall we proceed it? Uh, using the email? Yes. Okay. Uh, are we, are we take the screens now from now on? Yes, please. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so uh, uh, thank you for your presentation, Mr. Ong. And I hope that you guys uh, got useful knowledge from this expert webinar session. And uh, company Dr. Tu is a quite good company for geotech uh, design as you watch it. So uh, please contact him and get more productivity in your upcoming project. And lastly, I would like to do the poll system again to get the information of your interesting. So the first question is, uh, is this webinar topic uh, useful for your current or upcoming project? Okay, so oh, there, there are two more uh, questions after this. Okay, so go to next question. And if you want to get the training license, so please check the yes uh, from there. Right, and the last question is uh, same with uh, previous question. The question is which geotechnical software do you usually use in your project? It is uh, multiple select.
Okay, so uh, thank thank you for your an answering uh, all my questions, and uh, thank you for watching expert webinar session today. And uh, see you next uh, webinar session. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, your your queries will will be sent out uh, with a response uh, through the your registered email. Uh, thank you very much.